What's up guys, it's Lewis one here, and today we'll be showing off the stasis turret build for Warlocks and show you how much better they are right now. So let's get into the video. So with this build and why I am going over it again is the fact of the new stuff we got this season and after tinkering around with stuff and making this build the best it can be this build is even better than before. So let's go with the aspects and fragments we we'll use this build. So the aspects, we we'll use Bleak Watchers, as obviously this is how we generate the Stasis Turrets, and then Glacial Harvest. This is where we're generating our Stasis Shards, where we obviously freeze Kabans. Fragments, we split the Shards. When we destroy a Stasis Crystal, we get Grenade Recharge Rate increased. This is great as we get more grenades and meaning we get more stasis turrets. Whisper the Hunger. Increased melee energy gained from picking up stasis shards. So we'll get more uptime for our melee ability. And obviously for melee for stasis warlock, it instantly freeze targets, which is a good thing to have as this is an insta freeze and if we get bombarded with an unstoppable champion, we can instantly stop it easily. Whisper of Conduction, nearby stasis shards tracks your position and gives you 10 resilience and intellect. This is a nice benefit with those two additional stats. And just stasis shards coming to you is just always nice. And Whisper of Fractures, your melee energy recharge rates faster when you're near to more targets. As most activities now these days, there's a lot of ads, so this is nice for that. And having more freezing capabilities, especially with your melee ability, you can interfreeze. This is really good for that. So, let's go to the gear for this build. For the exotic armor piece we're using, we'll be using the Sonic Gloves, Osmian's Gloves. The main benefit for this and why we use it is it gives us two cold snap grenades. With that, we can have two stasis turrets at a time. Really good for that. And then, let's go for the exotic weapon we'll be using this build, Buried Bloodline. Now, the reason why we use Buried Bloodline is when you get roughly between 3 to 4 kills, you get Devour. This is obviously happens with its so, trait, Violent Reanimation. What does Devour do though? Devour, when you get to kill, extends the duration of Devour, gives you health back, and gives you grenade energy per kill. So it works like Demolitionist, but you can do it with any weapon, which is pretty good. But what if you add that with a demolished weapon and a headstone weapon in your kinetic slot? You get a lot of grenade recharge rate and you get a lot of grenades from it. So yeah, it's pretty insane to say at least. Now, there's a few weapons that can roll headstone and demolitionist. One of them being the vent, which we can't get anymore, that is Horror Story. The other one, you get to do Trials for, which is the Prophet. And one you can get from the Crucial Vendor, by just obviously throwing your engrams at him. That being the Unending Tempest. So, you have two weapons you can get at the moment, with Demolitionist and Headstone, but they require PvP. So, if you want to do that, you can do, but if you don't want to do that, just go with a one with Demolitionist, even if it's just a kinetic one, or Strand, Stasis, both work fine for that. So let's go over the main artifact perks you'd be wanting for this build, as we're not going to get any benefit from Solar, so we're realistically avoiding that, which is mainly the use those as fillers to get into obviously places we need. So with the answer effects you want for this build, you want Pillow of Ice, defeating Frozen Target Spawn Stasis Crystals, Dragon's Bite, breaking Capatan's shield with a strand or stasis weapon has just a chance to spend freeze combatants, uh wish into be white super is nearly full, recharge, ability battle blows, spawn also power. And then Hail the Storm, shattering frozen targets, and Stasis Crystal deals increased damage. And then when you shatter, either or, uh, 
which sends out shards that damage and slow targets. As I say, with this build, we're not benefiting from solar, so we're not getting the benefits of like Kindle Trigger, Torch, or Flint Striker. Obviously, in the first column, you can go with whatever um, mod you want for your champions. Obviously, nice to have the sidearm one, as then that can do anti barrier, and then you're covering all the bases for all of the champions. As you being on stasis, you automatically do unstop and overload. So, having obviously buried book line being sidearm, you can do the anti barrier, so you cover all of those bases. So, let's go with the monsters build. So for starters, for the helmet, we go with two different types of Cypher mods, being Void and Stasis, obvious reasons, because you're using those archetype of weapons, to generate all this power. Then Special Armor Finder, for more ammo for variable lines, so we can get it more frequently. Then for the gloves, two grenade kickstarters, as then when you throw your grenades, you get a grenade energy back, and having two, you get a bit more back. And then the fastball, to throw the grenades further for the chest piece two armor charges as then it allows us to have the maximum of five armor charges at once and then we can get the maximum benefit when we throw a grenade and then for the other slot that can be any mod you want so go whatever uh, for the boots two invitations obviously when you pick up all this power you get the grenade energy that's why I've got that and then elemental charge with the obviously station shards will you generate with this build we have a chance of getting obviously armor charge back from when we pick up a scissor shot. So it's nice for that. And then for the bond or class item, we're going with three bombers. Self self said realistically. When we use a class ability, we get grenade cooldown back. As this build is really many benefit on getting our grenade cooldown to the lowest it can, so we can just throw loads and loads and loads of grenades aka stasis turret so yeah that's the build and this is stasis turret warlock 3.0 so yeah this is probably been the most definitive one i would say unless obviously stuff changes with these artifact mods but even that this build is ridiculous and yes it's a must have for all stasis turret builds out there but Thank you guys for watching and if you want me to see do any more build videos let me know or any other types of Destiny 2 videos just let me know in the comment down below. But thanks for watching and see you guys next time.